This might be the answer. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. Okay. Crazy little Tuesday we got going on here. Um, I got a, a question from our boy Johnny um, that we answered recently and he threw me another one that I just thought was a really good one so I kind of moved him up to the to the front of the pack so we're going to attack Johnny's new question today and Johnny says thanks for answering my questions recently you're very welcome he goes I'm curious why is an inhalation needed when lifting something heavy for instance prior to a 1RM squat since you've expressed that IR is force production but inhalation would be ER is the reason along the lines of needing ER expansion so that we can IR compress. Johnny, I love the way you're thinking. You're on the right track. But let's let's break this down just a little bit more um, so we have a better understanding of what's going on and why we're using breath the way we do, especially for, for high levels of force production and in certain exercises especially. So we're gonna probably talk about a squat a little bit here as, as a frame of reference, but I want you to understand that this is gonna to apply to any number of activities, especially like I said, when we have high levels of force production. So one of the things that we wanna talk about first and foremost is we gotta talk about where we came from. So we evolved from swimmers and swimmers are biased more towards ER. When we came up on land, that's where we were required to really work hard against gravity. And so this is where we really developed our IR capabilities. So the thing that we wanna understand is that internal rotation is superimposed on top of this external rotation. And so this is where we produce force. So the heavier the load, the more force you're gonna to need to produce. And so, when we move through the excursion of an exercise, so when we want to access range of motion. So if we talk about a squat, I have to descend in the squat and then I have to stand back up into the squat. And so I'm going to superimpose that internal rotation and that force production on top of my, my expansion bias, which gives me my external rotation. And so the degree that I need to inflate, if you will, is going to be determined by how much force I need to produce, how much range of motion I need to produce. And so Olympic weightlifters are actually a really good representation of this. So if you watch them, as they uh, move through the lifts, especially um, if you're looking at clean and jerks, and once they stand up with the clean, and you'll see them sort of sipping air, so they're inhaling and exhaling, you're trying to optimize the amount of pressure inside, inside the body so they can access certain ranges of motion, so they can create a certain shape, so they can maintain enough force production underneath the bar. Um, that's essentially what we all do when we're, we're performing our lifts, and you've probably had some experience yourself when you're doing your own squats is that you sort of have to have this optimized amount of, of air volume um, in the, in your your rib cage you have to have a certain amount of, of muscle tension available to you so you can so you can perform the squat because if you don't have enough expansion then you're not going to be able to access the the range of motion that you're trying to access during, during the squat itself and so this is one of the reasons why you see um, as as people slowly put weight on the bar during a workout, you'll see their squat sort of change. And so in, in some cases, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see a shallower and shallower representation of a squat, or you're gonna see a bigger lordosis, or you're gonna see more forward lean, or you're gonna see changes in knee position. So what these people are doing is they're trying to access certain positions, but because of the, the context of the lift, so the amount of load, the amount of expansion capabilities that they do have, the amount of compressive strategy that, that, that they do have, they have, have to access actually change the, sh the shape of their body. And so um, if you inhale too much, what you may end up doing is you create too much expansion, you have too much ER, and then you can't squeeze enough, and so you're gonna end up missing a lift. So if I don't inhale enough, then you may have a force production issue as well. So think about if I don't inhale, I won't have my full ER excursion, that's going to immediately narrow the excursion they have available for internal rotation. So my sticking point is somewhere around 90 degrees of hip flexion, plus or minus, 30 on, on either end. So I might have a 30 to 60 degree range of motion where I need to produce high force through internal rotation. But if my excursion of internal rotation is insufficient because I didn't expand enough, I don't have enough time to apply force. And so I'm gonna miss the lift under those circumstances as well. 
So Johnny, we can break this down into multiple factors then. We can look at it from the expansion capabilities to access external rotation. So I have internal rotation available to me. I have to create enough internal pressure in, in compressive strategy, but I have to have enough inhalation so I can squeeze against that to create the pressure. And then I need to actually maintain the shape of my body so I have enough force production directly underneath the bar to lift it. So think about a front squat under certain situations. So you'll see a lot of people dump front squats forward because they cannot maintain the anterior expansion of the bar. So that's another shape change that we have to consider as well. Johnny, I hope I answered your question for you. Um, this is a really, really interesting topic. So if I didn't, um, please ask another question at askbillhartman at gmail.com and I will see you guys tomorrow.